Is the Kentucky Bourbon Festival worth going to? I went earlier this year and here's what I thought. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So I went down to the Kentucky Bourbon Festival in Bardstown, Kentucky this year. The festival was from uh, September 14th to the 18th. The main days were the 16th to the 18th, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I got a ticket for uh, Sunday, just the one day pass. And overall, I gotta tell you, I had a really, really awesome time down there. So I wanted to recap my experience for you guys, give you a little bit of the highlights so that you know what to expect if you do end up buying a ticket or traveling. Lots of people travel in from all over to come to this festival. It's always nice to know what you're getting yourself into. Now, in talking about the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, I wanna specifically address three different aspects that I think give a sort of holistic view of the festival itself and what you can expect. Before we get into those three aspects though, I do just wanna say first, thank you to everybody for the support of the channel. It's been really awesome to see the channel grow and go back and forth with you. Second, got the goal to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. If we hit that goal, we're gonna do a really fun giveaway. So if you haven't subscribed already, please consider hitting that big red button while you're at it, hit that like button too. All right, let's get into the three aspects of the Kentucky Bourbon Festival that I wanted to highlight. So first is just the overall focus of the festival. So without a doubt, there is one singular focus of the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, and that is bourbon. And that is a really, really good thing. Obviously, when you have a name like Kentucky Bourbon Festival, and this is the premier festival in all of Kentucky, all of the world really for bourbon, showing off what Kentucky as a state uh, does so well, which is create bourbon. And, you know, it needs to be focused on that. I have heard tell that in the past years, uh, especially before COVID and things like that, the focus of the festival was really more a family-oriented thing. It was sort of a social gathering, town fair kind of experience. Even the bourbon sometimes was off-site for people over 21 to go to. That is no longer the case. They've sort of revamped their focus and now it is truly about the bourbon. So just to give you a brief overview of the things that you'll get in terms of the bourbon there, you get a, a free little glass to taste out of for the whole day, which is nice of them to provide. And then all of your tasting is now included in the price of the ticket, which I believe was a new feature this year. And man, is that a good feature because I got to walk around with my buddy that I went with and we just had a blast uh, walking up to different distilleries and their tables. They had some really nice products available for us to taste. Lots of their just core lineups, but some really uh, elevated products. For instance, we got to taste like the Michter's Toasted uh, Sour Mash from this year, which was awesome. Got to taste some Kentucky Owl products. And then we got to taste things like a Discovery Series from Bardstown as well. So really, really nice of them to provide that experience. And then really nice for distilleries to just provide some really uh, sort of elevated, great high shelf bottles that we're all looking to try at least once, you know, and see how they are. Overall, there were over 40 distilleries there. They're all from Kentucky, since that's a requirement, since it is the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. There was an entire section for the major, uh, larger distilleries, like your Old Foresters, your Woodford Reserves, your Buffalo Trace, your Jim Beam, everything like that. So major section over there. And then there was a whole craft distillery kind of lawn and section that you could go to. And that was really nice too, because they had their own little moment to shine. And especially the craft distilleries, a lot of the like master distillers and people behind those brands were standing right there, ready to show off their whiskey, which was so, so cool. And then last but not least to highlight here, there were over 20 different single barrel picks that you could get that were exclusive to the Kentucky Bourbon Festival that they did just for the festival. And you could buy there on site. You could also buy bottles from all the other distilleries too if they were willing to sell them, which was great. All right, the second thing I wanted to highlight today about the Kentucky Bourbon Festival and my experience was the atmosphere of the event. So overall, sort of hand in hand with the focus really being on the bourbon, I would say the atmosphere was really, really nice. Um, 
beautiful open lawn, a pretty tight knit, close quarters. A lot of the distilleries were close together, but you didn't have to walk far. You could easily just hop from one table to the next, which was really nice. Bardstown is a beautiful town, very accessible, not at all overwhelming and just sort of homey and cozy feeling for sure. Parking wise, we didn't have any issue with parking. It was a relatively easy experience. There are quite a number of people there that day, but still parking wasn't all that much of a challenge. I know that might have been different maybe on Saturday or something like that, but for us overall, it was a very uh, sort of streamlined experience. They got us into the festival quickly. You just wear a wristband and you scan yourself in with ID, of course, and then that wristband is just, uh, if you wanna pay for anything throughout the day, they can just scan your wristband and your uh, credit card is right attached to it. So very safe and secure space as well. So it is a 21 and over event now. Like I mentioned in the past, I think it's been more of a family thing and some of the bourbon has been separate, but now it's just anybody who's a bourbon aficionado or wants to go experience the many options of bourbon in Kentucky can go. So it is a 21 and over event, which I think is nice for you know, something focused on the bourbon side of things. And then last but not least, the big hesitation or thought you might have about drinking and tasting that much bourbon all day is, does it get real sloppy? Do a lot of people um, struggle to make their way home at night? What's sort of the overall vibe and atmosphere given that? I would say, again, really, really nice. They had wonderful food trucks available so you could get some pretty nice food and sort of sober up uh, during lunchtime or the afternoon if you wanted to. They had a free water station, so that was a little bit tucked toward the back, but much needed because as you're tasting that much stuff, at least as I tasted that much stuff and couldn't resist tasting more and more, I needed the water and I needed some food. But again, just really good atmosphere overall, not too sloppy, it sort of took care of us as the people who were attending this festival, and they clearly did a lot to try to make it a fun, clean, and bourbon focused event. All right, that covers point one and point two. Point three is pretty simple. It's the price you pay for this event and whether or not it's worth it. Okay, so in terms of pricing here, there's a little bit of a tier system. So you could get the one day pass like I did for Sunday, which was $75. If you ask me, 100% worth it. I tasted well over $75 worth of bourbon and had a ball of a time. Again, got to just sort of experience so much whiskey that I wouldn't be able to experience otherwise too, which was really, really cool. You could also get a $125 three-day pass. So if you wanted to go on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, get more out of the experience, stay in Bardstown, make a trip of it. It's honestly only $50 more to do that. And I think, again, totally, totally worth it. You could also pay for some premium options like classes or tastings through lineups with the master distiller right in front of you, which would be really cool. I didn't pay for any of those extra features, but from what I saw, they're all sort of between that like $75 to $100 extra to do those things. Nice little feature if you're looking to sort of have a more intimate or educational experience while you're down there. So can't really pass any judgment on all of those, but it seemed like uh, a lot of people had a lot of fun doing those things. So in terms of price and what you're paying for and what you get, I think it is a really actually a bargain. It's a really, really good deal and a really fun day worth of tasting bourbon and experiencing um, the best that Kentucky bourbon has to offer. Before we wrap up the video, do just want to say that the highlight for me was of course tasting the whiskey, but also getting to just talk to the master distillers who were behind this stuff, especially some of the craft guys. I got to talk to um, the guys from Bourbon Pursuit who you know have Pursuit United as their brand. Talk to them and love their podcast, so shout them out, of course. But overall, it was just such a cool and intimate experience within the world of bourbon, and I love this community so much, so it was so fun to be a part of it. And probably the biggest highlight for me was getting this bottle, which was uh, Discovery Series 8, but it's signed by master distiller Steve Nally from Bardstown Bourbon Company. As I went through the um, entire tasting of the day, this was the product that stood out the most to me. Just really, really good whiskey. And I just kind of fell in love with it on the spot. So ended up buying a bottle and then Steve Nally was there and he was gracious enough to sign it. So really, really nice experience overall at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. I basically have nothing negative to say about the whole experience and would highly recommend that if you're looking for a great bourbon-centered trip, 
or want to go taste and experience all of Kentucky bourbon at one time, basically, this is, this is the place to be. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up my thoughts on the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. As always, would love to hear from you what your experience has been. Have you gone in the past? Have you watched it change throughout the years? Put that down in the comments below and let me know. And then if you're planning a trip or looking forward to getting into uh, the Kentucky Bourbon Festival in the future, let me know in the comments below. Happy to go back and forth and talk about more of my experience there. Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.